live now. Yes. But we're still in practice session, so you're not seeing it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that is us on our channel, but this is us on OET. All right. So this is us on our channel. Okay. It's yes. it's gonna start, it's gonna start soon. Remember, there's a delay, so it's going yes. to start. Soon. Yes. Yeah? yes. Yes. And oh, good lord. And now they're seeing us. Oops, sorry. Stop sharing. You can see whatever you're showing on this uh, on the screen. Actually. Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, uh, webinar is now streaming. Is now streaming live. Okay. So let. Have a good one. And mute myself now. Have a good one. I mute All right, we are live. Okay, hello everyone. All right, we are live. Okay, good. Hi everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome to um, today's webinar. Um, Asal says, you've been waiting for me for an hour to go live. Well, hopefully, we're now good to go. Hi, everyone. Welcome to our webinar. Um, we're trying a new technique, everyone. So if we have a few hiccups, um, bear with us. But once again, welcome to um, our OET webinar. Here, we are streaming now live um, lots of places. We are on OET's Facebook, we are on OET's YouTube, but you can also now go over to um, Pro Medical English's YouTube channel, Banfield's Professional Medical English. You can see us there and you can also see us on our own Facebook page. But yes, this is OET's um, regular monthly webinar where I pop in and I focus on one particular, where I focus on one particular session, one particular topic in OET, and we get into it um, a little deeply, okay? All right, so now that the hiccups are over, let's start welcoming everyone. Now I'm here on OET's Facebook page, but from time to time I'll pop over uh, to YouTube and say hi. And let's see where you are joining us from. Um, hi Asal, your, 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 your um, goal has been achieved. We're here, we're starting now. Sumeya, hello. We have Sakina Karim, who is joining us from Bangladesh. Um, we have Rhonda, hi Rhonda, James, um, Kritzal. Um, we have James Washing from Zambia's Copper Belt. Um, that actually sounds very interesting. Um, Corner is from the land of Marites, the Philippines. Welcome from the Philippines. Um, uh, Banguiran, oh dear, I'm sorry, I hope I didn't get your names wrong. Yeah, you are joining us from the UAE. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And also we have people, uh, Monira, joining us from Libya. Um, I could pop over to, um, let's see, uh, 
maybe YouTube and see what's going on over there. Um, but I don't want to be all over the place. Um, instead, I want to focus on what's going on, the topic we have for today. Um, but still, I love, I love seeing where people are, are coming in from. We've got someone from Croatia. Ah, that's great. Um, Kulad from Islamabad in Pakistan as well. So we've got a lot of people from Islamabad, from Pakistan, from Zambia. We have Afua, Afua from Ghana. Um, the result of the last exam in the Philippines just came out. <gasps> So I hope anyone who has OET coming up or who just did OET, lots of success for you. Um, Yasmin is from Libya. Harish is from India. We've got Christina from Romania. Christina is back. Welcome. Asal is from Australia. Wonderful. And I, whether you are joining us on YouTube or you're joining us on Facebook, whether you are joining us from uh, Banfield's Professional Medical English or you are joining us from OET, I want to say welcome, welcome. And today I want to be giving you food for thought and getting some feedback from you on listening skills. So how it usually works is um, I'll do my presentation, um, get a little feedback from you. And once the presentation is over, then we open the floor for you to ask me questions. Today's topic is listening. However, so we'll prioritize listening. However, if you have any other questions um, about anything, you can feel free to ask me. Um, I'll be here for about 40, 45 minutes to chat with you. So without any further ado, um, <coughs> I'm sorry, welcome to Cape Town. Um, as well, who have joined us. Um, we've got a really nice spread across the world and everybody is on the same OET journey. Okay, so now let's get down to business. I am going to screen share my presentation with you. Oops. Right. Now, um, everyone, wherever you're watching, sometimes there's a little bit of a lag in the feed. Uh, which means that I say something um, or I'm sitting there waiting. It takes you a few minutes to pick up. Not a big deal. There's nothing wrong with the feed. Um, it just has to do with the lag. Okay, great. So everyone, today's topic is OET, OET listening, and it's about improving your grade by improving your techniques. And um, I've spoken on this topic before and I had improve your technique, but this time around, I made a point, an extra point to put that S on there and you're going to see why, all right? Um, just so you know, on our website, we have lots of free resources for OET. So you can either put in this um, email, this uh, URL here, promedicalenglish.com slash resources, and it will take you right to our page. Or, or <clears throat> sorry, you can just scan the QR code here. But what we have is this series that we call The Coach. And what this does, it does not replace working with your tutor or doing a full course. But what it is designed for is to give you a compact overview of just what we are going to talk about today and a lot of other things. Um, so a lot of what we speak about, what we will speak about today is in the OET coach. You just go on over, um, type in your name, click on the picture, type in your name, and it comes straight to your mailbox, okay? But more on that later. Let's now talk about skills and techniques, okay? So the listening subtest, as you know by now, has three parts, A, B, and C. In the A, you are listening for about five minutes each um, to two um, interviews between a patient and a healthcare professional, and each one has 12 um, questions that you have to answer. 
The part B now, it is six short audios with uh, three multiple choice questions each. And uh, the, okay, we're gonna get, don't worry, we're gonna get to, I see some people are already typing in and they're saying it's hard to listen and write at the same time. Yeah, you're right, it is. But we're gonna get to that, don't worry. Um, so getting back to part B, you're going to have six short audios and each audio is a multiple choice question. You have to um, pick one of the choices. And then we have the listening part C where once again, you've got these longer audios, about six minutes or so. And it can either be an interview with two people talking. And the two people is an interviewer who just asked short question and the interviewee who does the long talking. And uh, then you have to answer again, a multiple choice question, um, three options, but it's six questions. And what we're gonna do is break down the skills that you need, plural, into common skills you need for all three parts and specific skills you need for the different parts. Because as you see, each part has a different layout, okay? So there are things you definitely need for everything, but there are little techniques that you really do need to, to kind of hone to, to really um, knock each part out of the park, okay? So let's look first at the listening part. A, um, hopefully by now everyone has at least seen one of these papers once. Common skills you are going to need. And by common skills, I mean, again, skills that you need throughout the listening. And as a matter of fact, throughout OET, but throughout the listening. You need a wide range of general, basic, and health vocabulary. Why is this important? I've come across, or we come across, um, at Pro Medical English, students who they study for OET by, by doing papers, doing practice papers, doing practice papers, because they're, they're looking for, oh, if I know the vocabulary of this practice paper, I would have beat OET. No. In the listening part A, in the listening part B, the listening part C, there is a wide range of vocabulary. So yes, you definitely need to practice with practice papers, but you also need to be reading and improving and being comfortable with general English. Because a lot of the times, the questions they're asking is not about health care, but they're general questions that check your general understanding of grammar and vocabulary. And they do a lot of restating and rephrasing. So it will appear one way on the paper, but the person or person speaking say another way. And you've got to be able to put this sentence and this sentence together, or this word and this word together, okay? You have got to be able to write while listening. Yes, some person already wrote in um, that uh, listening um, while writing is a problem. There's no shortcut to that, okay? Practice, 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 okay? But there is a way to build up your skill by starting small and increasing. And we'll talk more about that later. And understand signposting and what signposting is. So here's a quick example, all right? What are signposts in a conversation? So anyone, everyone writing, what are signposts in a conversation? Just jot it in the notes. I can see your notes here um, in OET Facebook I am. Jot it down, tell me. In OET Facebook, I am. Sorry. Jot it down. Sorry. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I see some general questions. Um, I am going to come back to them. Um, as a matter of fact, I'll just make a quick note here. 
um, about headphones. So anyone, just jot in, jot down um, what a signpost is. Okay, I'm just gonna refresh because I am maybe not seeing the comments. Ah, here we go, wonderful. All right. All right, we won't take any more time with that then, but a signpost is something that tells you um, where you are in the conversation, okay? Or that tells you uh, what's coming up. So one of the skills you need to be able to develop is through listening and reading, being able to go, okay, this is a signpost and think about what other ways can you talk about medical history? What other ways might they say current symptoms? What other ways might they say action required? What other ways might, just taking random words, what other ways might they say intolerance to? Because everything you see on here in one way or another is a signpost in the conversation. Okay, so that's, so those are common skills. Specific skills you need is the ability to hear that exact word that is needed and get it written down, yes, while still listening. Get it written down and then pick back up. So actually one of the skills that I should put here is a common skill is that ability to switch off right quickly and switch back on without panicking that you've missed something, okay? Now, the thing about the listening part A is there is actually a little tolerance for misspellings. So if you spell vegetable instead of vegetables or you put E-L instead of L-E, there is a great chance that you're still going to get it correct because it is clear that you have heard the word for this reason. In your practice, and when you're working with your tutor, um, understand that don't waste time trying to spell it absolutely perfectly. Um, just if you do not understand exactly what you hear, write down as close as possible to what you do hear. Um, if it sounds like vegetables and you only get done vegetable and you spell it incorrectly, just move on because chances are you still get it correct, okay? Um, skimming fast. You've got the 30 second time before the audio starts. So in that 30 second time, you have got to pick up the keywords. Um, in the description, you hear an endocrinologist. So you start going, okay, endocrinologist, what are they going to talk about? Hormones, changes in the body, diabetes, and just rattle it off in, in, your head, uh, medical history, how else can that come? Current symptoms, how else can they say that? Action required, how else can they say that? And don't just think about one word, try to open up your mind and go, okay, it can sound like that and that. No, I know what you're going to say. You're going to say, oh, but mm, that's a lot in 30 seconds. Again, practice and a wide vocabulary. It keeps coming back to a wide vocabulary. Preempting as well fast. Well, that's the same thing. You skim fast and you go, okay, if I say intolerance to, I'm listening for them to talk about maybe allergies or reacting to or things like that. So these are specific skills that you're going to need in the listening part A. Okay. So let's look at the listening part B. Again, common skills, reading comprehension, just understanding the language. You need that throughout OET. Um, but also understand what they're really asking for. And this is a common skill to both part B and part C. Too often you read it and you go, okay, you're reading fast and you assume what they're asking and you do not read in detail. All right. And I say to my students who are working with a pen, 
uh, on paper, I go, the tip of your pen is your friend. It slows your eyes, your eye down, and it gets you to pay attention to the detail. What are the options really saying? And again, white vocabulary, um, restating and rephrasing. Okay. The specific skills here, however, are a bigger challenge because you need to understand things like gist and main point that the reader, that the speaker is, is making. Inference, which is a kind of a conclusion. Call to action. What is the speaker asking the listener to do? Or one person in the audio asking the other person to do. Um, broader meaning, when you take all of these ideas that were discussed together, you know, what, what's the story you can take away? And purpose of communication. Are they warning? Are they encouraging? Are they motivating? Are they explaining? What is the purpose of the communication? So you need to be able to understand the language, the different ways this language can come. And there's more than one way, all right? And the other thing that personally I, even as a teacher and in training, I found quite challenging is that quick change in focus. Because in the part B, it's going from two nurses talking to a doctor and a patient, to an administrator talking to trainee staff and back and forth. And it is really mentally challenging. So again, that's a specific focus you need, especially in the listening part B. So let's move on to the listening part C. In the listening part C, again, common skills, the same as for part B, gist, broader meaning, inference, attitude and opinion comes in, purpose of communication, and so on. Um, but also the specific skill here is listening to one person talk, and especially in the, the lecture, continuously for six minutes, seven minutes, without once getting distracted, without once losing your way. While you jump in, you jump in and jump back out. So you jump into thinking and then jump back out. Okay, so that is one thing that you really, really have to work on building. Okay, we seem to have a tech problem, guys. Um, not sure why it happened. Let's see if we can get it back here. Give me one second, guys. We're going to get right back into it. Um, not sure what happened and why it happened. Um, but, oops, sorry. Right. Give me one second, guys. And then we, we're, we're going to get right back into it. Okay. Oops, sorry about that. Um, All right, okay. Seems we had a little problem here. Hopefully we're back now. Okay, good. Sorry about that. Seems we had a little problem. Good, so now we're back. Okay, so listening part C, common, uh, the specific skills um, that listening for a long period of time without getting distracted. And especially remember that by now you're in there for like 40 minutes. Listening, that's a lot, okay? That's a lot. Now I like to call OET a sum of its parts. A lot of people, a lot of candidates who first come to us, um, they're trying to take in everything at once. And while it looks like you're making progress by tackling the big job at once, what happens often is you hit a wall. You hit a wall. 
um, and you're not understanding why you're not getting over that wall. And it is because you are tackling the big things instead of taking time to focus on those individual ingredients, okay? Trust me when I say this. You take time to focus on the individual ingredients, the individual skills. And then when you come to do the whole OET paper, swish, just, it goes much more smoothly, okay? So what is good practice for building the general skills? One, gain insight. What do I mean by insight? Everybody's brain is different. How does your brain work? Everybody learned English differently. How did you learn? And how did that affect where you were weak and where you were strong in your language and your listening? Figure out and then focus on improving each of those areas, the areas I just spoke about, the areas you will see in the OET coach. And then you develop a study style. Everyone studies differently. There's no shame or, or problem in that. Work with your tutor, find out how you best can tackle these issues, develop a study style, develop a study plan, so you hit all of these micro skills and then build to the hold. Picking up exact words, um, sometimes it honestly comes down to accents. So one of the things you really should be doing is uh, listening to different kinds of accents, okay? So yes, you can listen to the accents only in the OET test, but my strong advice to you is to just go and find healthcare podcasts from different countries, speaking English and listen to different accents. Canada, America, maybe even a South American accent speaking perfect English. Australia, New Zealand, the UK, Africa, India. Just get your brain accustomed to different accents and then that actually helps quite often in picking up exact words that the person is saying. Building listening stamina. Well, yeah, you can start by listening to 40 minutes. But me, if I were you, I would start, listen to three minutes today, tomorrow four minutes, next day five minutes, until you can sit down and listen to an hour with no problem. That's building listening stamina. Cultivate your, your, your comfort level. By cultivate, we mean to, to kind of care for it, okay? And increase it. Okay, by listening daily. Your brain will actually learn more by doing 10 minutes a day of listening. 10 minutes of listening every day than waiting until the end of the week and doing a whole hour. Okay, honestly, I'll be frank with you. When you go to the bathroom, you're sitting there, listen to it. You're sitting on the bus or the train on the way to work, listen to some English. You're sitting down taking your coffee break at work or you're at lunch or you're walking from the car park to the main building, listen to some English. Those regular small bits, you will be surprised at how fantastic they are for helping you. And build OET comfort. And by that, I mean the test itself. A lot of people are great in the classroom, great when they're practicing on their own, but once they are on test day or in a mock test, their brain freezes. Either because you know they feel the pressure or because they haven't timed themselves before. So build your OET comfort by practicing full tests eventually under time condition. Set the clock and when the time is up, the time is up, okay? All right, so in summary, how best to develop your listening skills? I'm sorry, there'll be those of you who want me to say, oh, there's just one thing you need to do and that cracks the OET. I can't tell you how often I've heard that. I need to crack the OET. There is no one secret. OET listening is a sum of the different skills together. You increase your skill with 
each of those abilities. And when you come to do the whole paper again, swish. So analyze your weak areas, which of those skills you need to work on. Give yourself regular exposure. Focus on the mini skills. Get them really up to a high standard. Test yourself under time conditions. Reanalyze. Did I get better in that, 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 and that area? If not, rinse and recycle. Rinse and recycle. Okay, and do it all over again. Okay. So that's it for me today. Um, I hope you got something out of it. Um, I know everybody wants that one answer that is a quick fix. Sorry, doesn't exist. Um, you really do have to know yourself, your style, your weaknesses and work on each of those. And to help you work on those and to understand the things that we've spoken about today and more, you can pop on over to our website um, and download these eBooks. They are 100% free, like completely. No obligation to buy anything, all right? Good, so that's it for me today. So now I'm going to turn to the comment section and I'm gonna scroll back up. So at this point, you can ask me anything you want, honestly, listening, but if you want to ask about anything, you can. So I'm going to go back up to the comments and I am going to scroll and see the kinds of comments that we have. Oh, they're coming out the opposite way. So I see a comment here from, let's see, um, a word with, Okay, right. So someone, I'm sorry, um, again, there was a technical problem with the feed, but Brian did say that a signpost is a word which kind of starts a new sentence or emphasizes, or Brian, um, it kind of signals, that's why it's called a signpost, it kind of signals, I'm about to talk about this. All right. So on that note, I am going to, and I just gave you a signpost. I said, on that note, which you can take to mean I've summarized everything and now I'm turning to a different topic. Okay, good. Excellent. So we did have some um, good answers here. So someone asked a general question. Um, are candidates provided with a headphone? And um, Lekka did say correctly, it depends on the test center, yes. There are some test centers where they have headphones. There are some test centers where they have ambient sound. But what they will do at the beginning is they will test the audio. They will test it. Um, and they will ask, oh, can you hear at the back? And um, do you have any problems? Oops, sorry. Do you have any problems hearing? And that will be that. Okay, um, sometimes the phrase is too long to write down in a short time in part A. Alisa, I want to tackle that. As a rule, as a rule, in the listening part A, the most you need is three words. OET does not just create these papers randomly. These papers are written, tested, um, rewritten, tested again, rewritten, and they are, they get dry runs. They all, OET also knows that you need time to write down your answer. You need time to kind of clock out, write down your answer and clock back into the audio. Yes, it only, it's only a couple of seconds, but you need that time. So they're not gonna give you a long sentence. If you're trying to write a long sentence, I suspect you're trying to write too much or not really understanding the exact part that they want. Because I've been doing this quite a while now. I mean, what, seven, eight years? And I have rarely seen, rarely seen um, where you need to put in more than three words. Usually it's one or two. And when it's something like a test, um, like say ECG, you can put in ECG, not electrocardiogram. So hmm, take some practice with that, okay? Um, 
Farina has a question about writing. Yes, Farina, if you've got a question about writing, we've got good time today, so you can put it in. In the meantime, I will go down to Christina. Please let you know how you can improve your vocabulary health. Actually, Christina, that's a very, very good question. Vocabulary is challenging because it is hard to learn vocabulary overnight. Vocabulary comes from exposing yourself to a wide range of reading. So yes, as I said, you can read OET papers, but um, we recommend, we have like a library of articles that are both general and specific to healthcare. That students in our courses, um, we use them as honestly homework, as just reading exercises or for the, the students to self-study, to get them familiar both with um, healthcare vocabulary, but also general vocabulary. Um, and for one, for students who have a much lower level, we have an established um, low, we call it a B1, B2 course, a medical English course that focuses on building that very, 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 very basic vocabulary that you need to then go on to a higher level and tackle those longer articles and OET itself. Um, one word, read. I can almost always tell students who do not read because they do suffer from that problem, a limited vocabulary. You can only learn so much vocabulary from vocabulary lists. Read, read and read and read again, okay? Um, uh, can you use shorthand, Alisa, Alisa asks again. For the listening part, A, now when you say shorthand, I would say try not to because your shorthand is an abbreviation and not everyone is going to recognize your abbreviation. If it is an internationally recognized abbreviation, like for example, they say hemoglobin, which is something everyone in healthcare knows. And you put H small b, yes. Why? Because large H small b is the internationally recognized abbreviation for hemoglobin. If they say ultrasound and you put US, yes. Why? Because US or U slash S is the internationally recognized sign for ultrasound, abbreviation for ultrasound. ECG, EKG, yes, yes, yes. But any other abbreviation that you come up with on your own, no. Um, is it possible OET examiners repeat the papers? Um, no. OET, as far as I know, as far as what I've seen, as far as my experience, they do not repeat papers. And even if they take something and rework it, it is not going to be exactly the same as before. So for those who might be thinking, oh, if I just learn off the OET um, paper, if I just do enough OET papers, I will come across the paper that I am going to do next, I wouldn't bet on it. It's, it's not a good strategy. It's not a good strategy. Um, it could actually be to your advantage. All right. Um, get, oops, sorry. Sorry, guys. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Right. Um, when practicing score get boom, but on OET conditions, it becomes more like, oh, I'm sorry, Patil, I'm not quite understanding you, so I'm going to go on. Um, more questions. Let's see. Hold on. The part C is daunting. Yes, it can be. Um, people are afraid of things like when I write my answer, I then miss my place. 
people worry about things like, oh, it's hard for me to focus that long on one thing. Um, people worry about things like, oh, I'm not familiar with the topic, so I worry. OET knows that you're not, not everyone's going to be familiar with the topic. If it's a psychiatry topic and you're not a, a psychiatrist or psychiatric nurse or a psychologist, it should make no difference because the questions they're asking are not about medical knowledge. It's about your understanding of English and the meaning of sentences. So yes, it can be daunting, but again, I would say, break it up into its small parts. Again, listening is a sum of small parts. It's not just one big part. So why are you finding it daunting? Is because the listening is too long? Is it because the accents worry you? Is it because vocabulary? Is it because of fast reading to, to identify the, the main points in the questions before the audio starts. Understand where exactly you're having a problem and focus on that area, okay? Um, let's see more questions. Is there a chance of not having any word in reading, but, uh, oops, sorry. Uh, I'm able to do perfectly at home, but during exams, you're getting lost. That happens a lot. It's caused by panic and it's caused by not, I would say for you, practice more under test conditions. Have the clock there, have the room quiet, hit that button. And when that button goes, that's it, you're done. You might say to yourself, oh, but I haven't answered everything. Be tough on yourself. Be tough and strict with yourself. Practice under exam conditions. Take a paper and go to the library so you're in a different room. Okay? Have a watch on your wrist that vibrates so you don't disturb people. Okay? And go and do a test paper in different settings. Don't always do the test paper in the same room at the same desk. Move around, but always set that timer. Okay? Um, aside from names, Charlene is asking, how can we distinguish other words which need to be written with capital letters? Oh, in the reading part, in the listening part A, they're not going to care about the capital letters. In the listening part A, they're not going to care about the capital letters. They want to see if you wrote ECG. If you wrote ECG and it's in small letters, you're still going to get it right. So don't worry about it. Okay. All right. Um, Muhammad says he's repeatedly um, making mistakes in C. It might have to do, Ahmed, with you not focusing specifically on what the answer is, what the options are actually saying, or what the question is actually asking. And a little tip is um, in your practice, look at the question and try to reword it in your mind. Look at the options and try to reword them in your mind. And if you can reword them accurately, it will help increase your improve your focus. Okay. All righty. Um, okay. On daily practice listening, it would be good to get a score, but when practice under exam conditions, exactly. So I just answered that for you, um, Rohit. Yeah? Be tough on yourself. Don't wait for the exam to be tough on you. Be tough on yourself. Okay? All right. Um, another one, ma'am, if you accidentally wrote like same like words, utilize instead of you to, oh, does it matter? Both are acceptable, Sherilyn. Utilize with Z is the American spelling. Utilize with S is the British spelling, but they're both correct. They're both correct. They're both correct, okay? So don't, don't worry about stuff like that, okay? 
Hello, David, coming in from Nigeria. Welcome, welcome. I hope the weather and everything is good there. Um, listening part A is too difficult. Oops, sorry, I'm jumping here. How can you improve your score? Um, CG, we covered it. I, I, maybe you, you came in a little bit late. This um, stream is going to be on OET Facebook. It's going to be on OET YouTube. It's gonna be on our Facebook and YouTube as well eventually. Go back to the beginning of this video. Lots of tips, lots and lots of tips. Okay. Um, while practicing, you found in reading part A. Okay, we've got to read it. Reading part A, there's some questions in which it's not mentioned in the whole text, um, but it will be found in A, B, or C. Uh, Pallavi, that comes down to rewording and rephrasing. A lot of the questions in a lot of the language in the reading um, part A, in reading part A, the first and second section, the actual questions are rephrased. So it is for you to be able to put that language together with the language in the text. And again, this comes back to wide vocabulary and um, understanding language differently. Okay, so that might be where you need to work on, being able to recognize rephrasing and restating. All right. All right, guys, um, on that note, I think we're gonna call it a day for, uh, as we say in English, we're gonna call it a day. That'll be it for um, this live stream. Um, I hope you guys learned something today and you got some tips on how to study for your listening part A. Um, any questions you have, you can always um, go to promedicalenglish.com, um, go to our contact page, send us a query. Um, but again, um, a lot of the stuff that we covered um, is going to be in these books, okay? So that's it for, for now. And they're like four to now. That's it for now, guys. Take care and see you next time. Oh, and for those of you who are going to do your OET soon, lots of positive vibes to you. Lots of positive vibes. Um, the best, the very, very best of luck to you. Bye-bye.